The 80s were a time of great music and great music videos, but fans weren't just interested in the artists themselves. They also wanted to see a wide array of good-looking folks, too. As a result, some of the biggest names to come out of 80s music videos were the vixens who starred in them. But where are they today? There may have been music video babes before Tawny Katane, but none who seemed to capture the pure essence of 80s excess with such glee. In fact, she may very well be the ultimate video vixen, thanks largely to her turn atop a Jaguar XJ in White Snake's 1987 hit, Here I Go Again. It took just four minutes for this little-known actress to transform into the ultimate 80s pinup and enter a relationship with the band's frontman, David Coverdale. The two would marry in 1989. Katane would then use her MTV fame to land a role on the sitcom The New WKRP in Cincinnati, but the good times wouldn't last. She divorced Coverdale in 1991 and then married MLB pitcher Chuck Finley, only to see their marriage end following an arrest for assault against him in 2002. A stint on celebrity rehab came next, as Katane attempted to deal with her destructive drug habit. These days, Katane is focusing on being a mother and works with at-risk women. She's even got her famous breast implants removed, in a sign that she's finally moved on from her video vixen days. Being a former Playboy Playmate almost lost Ola Ray her dream job starring opposite Michael Jackson. She'd been cast as his love interest for the soon-to-be smash hit Thriller, but the superstar singer had concerns. It was director John Landis who finally talked Jackson into keeping her involved. The 13-minute music video would go on to become the most successful of all time, selling 9 million home video copies. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that out of all the women in the world that I was chosen to work, and I am so honored to have had that opportunity. Sadly, Ray's struggles with drug abuse consumed her life, and she was charged with cocaine possession in 1992, though she says she's clean now. She soon left the industry, telling People magazine that she refused to give out sexual favors to land parts. She later found herself embroiled in a lawsuit with the Jackson estate, which she claims still owes her money for the iconic music video. The lawsuit was filed just one month before Jackson's death, and they eventually settled out of court. But don't think she has any hard feelings for the King of Pop. She released a bizarre but relatively positive music tribute to him in 2013. There were a whole bevy of babes in the video for Robert Palmer's Addicted to Love, but Mac Gilchrist always stood out for her cool demeanor and statuesque beauty. A fashion model and the former face of Chanel's allure perfume, Gilchrist's career was already rolling by the time Robert Palmer came knocking. In fact, she has described her most iconic turn as just another day's work. But it wasn't until she was 45 that Gilchrist found her true passion, making the world just a little more green. While she had once owned her own reggae label and even briefly worked as a part-time firefighter, it was her passion for horticulture that led her to start Edible Bus Stop, a company dedicated to creating edible gardens alongside public bus stops. The results at the end of today are absolutely spectacular. We pride ourselves in greening the grey at the Edible Bus Stop. In British new wave band ABC's Poison Arrow video, lead singer Martin Fry just can't take no for an answer. No matter how many times Lisa Vanderpump rejects his advances, Fry just keeps coming, first dressed as a singing telegram, then a rock star, and then a tuxedo-bedecked millionaire. It must not have been that far from the truth for the English model, who was the toast of London at the time. One man Vanderpump did say yes to was Ken Todd. The two married in 1982 and founded a bar and restaurant empire together, but that was just the start for the millionaire socialite. In 2010, Vanderpump debuted on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, instantly becoming a reality superstar. She's since fronted her own spin-off, Vanderpump Rules, and popped up on Dancing with the Stars, on which she was voted off in week four of the 2013 season. No one could have possibly told Courtney Cox that life was gonna be this way. Then again, it might not have been if she hadn't landed a starring role in Bruce Springsteen's video for Dancing in the Dark. Cox was still a fledgling model at the time, although the boss didn't know that. He thought the girl he was told to pull up on stage was just a random fan. Director Brian De Palma didn't tell him the truth until the video was in the can. The song and music video were both smash hits, and suddenly, everyone wanted to be in the Courtney Cox business. She quickly picked up parts in films like Masters of the Universe and Cocoon The Return, and played one of Michael J. Fox's girlfriends on Family Ties. But it would be a little show called Friends that would really launch her into superstar status. Oh my. Monica's gonna marry a millionaire! As part of the show's ensemble, Cox dominated a decade of ratings and eventually took home a million dollars an episode. These days, Cox isn't exactly hard up for work. She starred on the long-running hit Cougar Town and has appeared on everything from Running Wild with Bear Grylls to Shameless. 
And considering her net worth has been estimated at over $120 million, she can probably do just about anything else she wants, too.